CNBC TV 18 Weekender, only on CNBC TV 18. You moved to Bombay after that, and uh, how was that? Not after that. I after that uh, I still worked in Delhi. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of private gigs, small gigs. Some gigs paid you like ten thousand, seven thousand. Jagratas? 000. Did you do that? No, no Jagratas, but private birthday parties. <laughs> 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 they are a little embarrassing sometimes. Like when you were just out of the reality show and you were just doing anything, and the people coming to you like we'll manage you. Let's change your look and uh, let's give you a makeover and all of that. I was like. Uh, I was very confused like what is happening but anyway so after that I did a lot of gigs uh, small small gigs open for a lot of people mm-hmm. open for Mohit Chauhan open for a lot of people and I saved money to work on my first single Panchi Ho Jawa right. and then I released that on on YouTube and uh, it did really well for me because it reached a lot of people like Swan and Kirkire Sneha Khanwalkar in the industry and uh, then I got then I released another single with Swan and Kirkire uh, because I just asked him because he got, we we became friends after the whole small interaction after Panchi, and I just asked him like if he would like to collaborate with me, and he just said, ah. and I said wow. <laughs> so then I released another single, and during all of that, uh, I was also calling people like I called Amit Trivedi once out of the blue, like I said like I'm a fan of yours and I want to work with you, and I called uh, Sneha Khanwalkar, mm-hmm. and I had Vishal Dadlani's number, but I was like should I call him because I'd heard. He is like, I was a little intimidated calling Vishal, but he's the sweetest person. Like, you know, what you think? Mm-hmm. Like, I thought, like, uh, he might get uh, um, annoyed. Right. But it turned out like he's the sweetest out of all, like, you know, out of all the people I've met. They're so encouraging till date. So I called these people and then. Uh, because of everything mm-hmm. like was happening, like Panchi was hap- Panchi had come out, I was calling and I got a call from AKFC, Anil Kapoor from right. Films. Riya Kapoor was producing Khoop Surat and I'd already called Sneha and she she got to know about me and like she got to know I exist, like I'm interested in whatever, like you just mm-hmm. send the vibe out or whatever. Right. Um, so I got to work on Khoop Surat. I sang for her. I sang Preet. Preet. And uh, then I moved to Bombay because I'd always thought ki kuch karke jaungi Bombay because Bombay can be a little scary. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to come here as a struggler ki aage ho bas singer banne. So this is really cool the stories that you're telling right now because I clearly remember when Panji Hojawa first came and I how I felt about it and then there was my ni and then there was Preet and all of that. So listening to your side of the thing rather than the audience side of the thing is pretty cool. So I, I'd like you to talk about Panchi Hojawa before you sing for us. Shiv Kumar Batalvi. So I am not, uh, I don't understand Punjabi as much, but I tried to learn a few verses only because I was a big fan of Shiv Kumar Batalvi. I was a big fan of Rabbi Shergil. So were they your influences as well? So like I said, my mom always used to mention Gula Amali, Chakjit Singh, Gulzar, Javed Akhtar, you know, listen to these songs, they're so nice. And she would mentioned once that she'd uh, studied Shiv Kumar Batalvi during her college mm-hmm. or school. She'd re- read some poems. So she always said like he's a great poet. So I think that's why the name stayed with me. And uh, obviously I've heard Rabbi Shergil and I'm a huge fan. Uh, so so du- uh, during those days I was I just finished this book John is, John, Jonathan Livingston Seagull so I was just googling like some poetry and all of that and uh, then I purchased a book um, by Shiv Kumar Batali and I because of Jonathan the, Li- Livingston right. I just th- got stuck on uh, Panchi Ho Jawa like right. you know it connected in my mind and I started when I was reading the poetry I started humming a tune and that that's it. Panchiyo Java, Udda Java, Ganda Java, Anchu Shikara Nuchu Pava, Dunya Diarava, Pulke Firkade, Nava Pasava, Jichai Panchiyo Java. That's my favorite song. Thank here. you. Another Shiv Kumar Batalvi song I'd uh, uh, like you to sing, which I don't think you've uh, performed, Ik Kuri. Yeah. You want to do that? I'm a fan of uh, uh, Ishtihar. Yes. Go for Ishtihar. Rabi. That's my favorite. Yes. Yep. Ek kudi jidana mohabbat saad muradi soni afabat gum ha gum ha gum ha gum ha gum ha surat osti Pariyavargi 
I love this version I the this most. Version. Let's talk about uh, the people you worked with. Uh, you've got Arijit to sing for you. Could you tell him that oh, this part you're singing wrong? Uh, I would not say like wrong. I mean, but I would you'd say, like it this way. I would say like uh, if you can try it in this way also, because I'm sure like what he's also doing is thinking uh, it's the best for the song. But sometimes you have a vision. And you just ask people, and sometimes you take their inputs also. So it's a very collaborative effort. But yes, I was a little nervous when I was working with Arijit, and I had to chase him a little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, when we recorded this song, he was a little um, unwell. But but the moment he sang it, it was so effortless. I said, oh my god, like it was worth waiting for him. He sang that yes, way with exactly. when he was down with fever. I, I wonder what he would have done if he was okay. And Amit, you worked with Amit. How was yes. that experience? Uh, like I said, I called him once when I was in Delhi, like, sir, I really want to work with you. Uh, I said, yeah, yeah, okay, fine. And then I again met him when he presented me the award at MTV VMAs mm -hmm. for Panchi. Mm -hmm. So I was like, haan, chalo, he'll think ki she's not uh, a see, random. Okay, <laughs> kuch kar hai. Kar hai. <laughs> kuch, like, so I thought, then I messaged him again, like, thank you so much. So when I moved to Bombay, he called me for a jingle mm -hmm. and we did a jingle and then we, I got a call again like come to the studio, let's, let's do something. I said uh, okay and I thought it must be a jingle. So I just went in a very key jingle yoga in that mood but uh, it turned out to be dear zindagi, uh, love you zindagi. The most ubiquitous Paytm karo. You gotta tell me that story. I sung jingles before but this was the first time I composed a jingle. Okay. And yeah, that's it. Like it was like uh, he wrote those lyrics. I said, okay, oh, yeah. and then in the end, it's like, "Isko kaise bolne Paytm karo." I said, "I said Paytm karo." So it just uh, became like this ear warm kind of thing, and it it yeah. it just worked. How do you feel when you listen to it every time? Uh, it, sometimes it feels actually kind of amazing during the uh, what happened demonetization, demonetization. and <laughs> I was just parking my car I said like oh, yeah well, I don't have money he's like pay DM karo. I said okay <laughs> <laughs> so the parking lot guy he said like pay DM karo. I said okay that that was the time when I felt actually good <laughs> <laughs> that's quite a story and <laughs> And this question, before we go into a break, I wish as a feminist this question wasn't there, but was it difficult to break into the mold of a music director being your gender? Actually, not at all. Uh, okay. Somehow, uh, I have not felt that, and it's not, and it's not been easy also because I'm a girl. Sometimes people say, "I, you're a girl, no, so I, you have your way." Like sometimes people say that. But uh, it's not that and it's not been difficult. It's, I just believe that it's on the basis of your work, like merits, merit of your work. Fair point there, we'll take a short break, come back and we'll get Jocelyn to perform for you. CNBC TV 18 Weekender, only on CNBC TV 18.